just about every project that I do requires me to test out some servos and experiment with their positions before they go into an assembly. And usually to do this, I just make a really quick servo tester on a breadboard and use the serial monitor in the Arduino IDE to get the servo positions. But this time, I decided to treat myself and I designed an enclosed permanent system to test my servos. So this design has room for 16 different servos that you can control and at any one time you can control four at once using the four potentiometers that are on the front of the design and then using the other two buttons you select the active set of four servos that you want to control. So the main reason I decided to make this now is for a bit of a mystery project that I'm working on at the minute that I've been posting quite a bit about on my Patreon page and this is something that's going to be really helpful with that mystery project. So I went through a few different design iterations with this servo tester. Um, in my early designs I was finding that the shape of it meant that it was really difficult to solder and then put together. And I also felt that some of the designs were quite ugly. Um, so in the first and second design I used a 0.6 inch OLED screen which you can get from Adafruit. And I found that it was actually extremely easy to use. It was essentially just the same as printing to the serial monitor. And both these first designs also only used four ports. So the main way that I changed the design from the early ones was to make a design that actually folds up. So the main reason for this was to try and make something that you could almost entirely solder with it completely open and then you'd be able to fold it up really easily and not have to worry about trying to solder things in awkward positions. And this works out really well I think. Depending on how big your printer is you can either print it in one go or you can join the two halves with a little in-between piece that I've made. And you can try and make all the connections for each panel and then right as you're closing up the case you can then make the connections between different panels and using some single core wire I had no problem at all soldering it whereas the other two designs were extremely difficult for me to solder as someone who's not very good at it. Designing the thing was actually really easy I just designed the shape that I wanted in Fusion and then making copies of it and rotating it I effectively unwrapped the model by merging the faces of copies of the model at different rotations. Maybe someone knows of a really quick way to do something like that, I'm sure there is, but this was pretty quick and easy for me to do. The thing that took the most time was actually the programming because the screen that I've chosen to use is a little bit more complex than most of the Adafruit commonly available nice screens that you can get. This monitor was manufactured by Sane Smart and there's a little bit more work to get it working, um, at least there was for me because I had to make some changes to the library. Um, but if you download the library as I've got it in my downloads, you should have no trouble and it should just be able to and it should just be able to upload it straight to the Arduino and get it working. But yeah, there was a little bit more programming work to do just in order to refresh different parts of the screen and update numbers and stuff like that. It's a little bit more difficult than than like print into the serial monitor, as I mentioned. Um, so if you're interested in me doing a video about the programming for that project, I'd be happy to do that, but for those of you who aren't really interested, you should just be able to upload it straight to your Arduino and it should work fine. I've also left the USB port on the Arduino Uno exposed, so it should be really easy to make changes to the code if you want to. But yeah, that's just a really quick and easy project. Um, I know for a fact that I'm going to get a ton of use out of it, because as I said, pretty much every project I do, I've, I've got to use something like this to test the servers. Um, so hopefully you can make one the same and you'll get quite a lot of use out of it too. And since this video has been pretty short up to now, I thought it'd be a good opportunity to, to give you a little bit of a channel update, talk about how the eye mechanism series went, and talk about what I'm planning to do for the future. Um, so with regards to the eye mechanism videos, um, I think it went really well. I had a lot of fun making them. I got a pretty good response, especially for the first few videos, and a lot of people have been trying it and having success. So I'm really happy with the way that went. Um, I do think there's lots to improve upon for me personally because I'd like to improve the format of my videos and the narration, just because I feel sometimes it's a little bit boring. Um, I would like to make some of my some of my explanations a little bit more concise because I think in reality there's very few people that actually want to try making my projects and I'd like the videos to still be entertaining to anyone who, who just wants to learn about it but doesn't necessarily want to build one for themselves. I also got some opportunities to learn more about filming. Um, I feel like for the future videos I've got some ideas about how to make the quality a little bit better. If I'm being honest the biggest thing that I've noticed about film quality is just turn down the ISO setting and it seems to just magically look better as long as you've got good enough lighting. Um, so hopefully 
videos coming in the future will have a nicer quality. I feel like making three separate designs for the eye mechanisms was pretty unnecessary. Um, I had intended to make an uh, advanced machined version and like a simplified version. It just somehow ended up being three. One of the main things that I was worried about was that parts like the ball links would be hard for people to acquire. Um, but as it turns out, for you guys in the US, it's actually really easy. You can get them on Amazon, no trouble. And it does seem like the majority of my audience is American. But I'm still going to think about making things easy for people to get um, in different parts of the world. Thinking about my YouTube channel overall, I do think that YouTube is a little bit of a problematic platform for my content sometimes. Just because it seems to make a take a really huge amount of effort to make each video or project for me and YouTube seems to favour channels that can upload more frequently, like multiple times a week, but I would never be able to make videos at the standard that I like to think I, I do any more frequently than I'm doing currently. Patreon, on the other hand, is seeming to work really well because I can easily make constant updates on where I'm at with the various projects and in no way does it have to affect the free content that I put on YouTube. So I think with Patreon and YouTube together, they kind of work well synergistically so that people have frequent updates on how I'm doing, but then they also get the high quality videos and the free content. So I'm really liking the way that my Patreon is going, but I am aware of the fact that my, YouTube's are, my YouTube videos are quite few and far between, and there are a lot of videos that are quite similar to each other, so I'm going to look at ways to make each video unique. And then as for the future, um, currently I'm pretty much done with the animatronic heart, and it came out really great. Um, I'll give you a really quick peek, um, but this is going to come out in the next few weeks. I'm also working on another animatronics project right now, which is giving me the opportunity to work on my programming skills. And I think this is something that's really important that needs to happen for me in order to continue to develop cooler stuff. I never used to like programming when I was younger. I used to think like, oh, why do I want to be sat in front of a computer, like looking at a screen when I can be doing something with my hands, but that's pretty silly and I think I'm starting to really enjoy it. It's like engineering in the sense that you're trying to find efficient um, and simple ways to do things, but it's like super stripped down compared to like designing a mechanism, which I think is really cool. I'm constantly thinking about the Bionic Hand projects and I have a ton of different ideas about it and I've been making some quick prototypes and then uh, going off those ideas and changing my mind and all sorts but I think that sometime in the near future I'm going to have to make a full new design and just kind of accept for myself that it might not be perfect but treat it as an iterative process you know I made the first prototype I'm probably going to have to have more than one more prototype before I get my perfect design that I'm after. I think it can be quite paralyzing to give yourself such high expectations, so I do need to make some developments soon and just and just work on the bionic hand gradually over time. And hopefully, um, if I'm able to share some more stuff with you guys, uh, I might get some better ideas. Um, as I have done already, I've had quite a few people contacting me with some good ideas. If I'm able to make a design by myself on Fusion 360 outside of university, then I will actually be able to share the files with you and I won't have to turn so many people down since the files are sort of attached to my university. I can just give everyone the files, so that'd be great. So yeah, next video is either going to be the start of the heart mechanism videos or if you really want a video with me talking about the programming for the servo tester, let me know and I could make that the next video. But regardless, stick around for the next video. Um, a massive thank you to my patrons as always. A big thank you to Captain Awesome, Ola Sander, Aaron Hurley, Eric Farrow, Gaius Syrah, William Winstead, Sid Taylor, Mike Potter, Michael Shepard, David Churchman, Michael, Daryl Barney, Jeffrey Warren Park, Simon Hershey, Greg Tarlin, Armin Oonk, Rick Gordon, Pepe Harmonyemi, Werner Schultz, Alexander Kokshirov, Martin Drake, Paul Lopes, Ian James, Ernst Roos Stratemans, Stephen Harris, Maker Project Lab, Sergey, Jason Souser, Jason Moore, Christopher LaRoche, Spider Math, Matt Norman, Fitsnips, Geeksmithing, and Aaron Nance. And I'll see you all in the next video.